In this video in our How to GAN series, the measurement and modeling of GAN transistors for predicting actual in circuit behavior is discussed. This video will focus on how best to understand and predict the actual in circuit behavior of GAN devices once layout has been completed. Although measurement and modeling are very different, they complement each other when attempting to understand real world behavior. The initial discussion will focus on the electrical modeling of GAN devices and conclude with a discussion on the requirements and limitations when directly measuring in-circuit behavior. Although enhancement mode devices are made to operate similarly to silicon MOSFETs, they cannot be readily modeled with traditional physics-based MOSFET models as the physics of the GAN device is significantly different. There are widely available models for enhancement mode GAN transistors in SPICE. The basic equivalent circuit used in a SPICE model for an enhancement mode GAN transistor is shown on the right. A limitation of basic modeling for EGAN devices is that for the LAN grid array or ball grid array configurations with virtually no packaging inductance, layout inductance becomes dominant and the layout method interacts with the resulting packaging inductance. Since layout dependent inductance cannot be included in a device or package level model, the parasitic inductance needs to be added as an additional system component for accurate system modeling. Shown here is an illustration how PC board layout impacts layout inductance for a given land grid array device termination. On the left side, figure A, is a relatively low inductance layout. In contrast, on the right side, figure B, is a higher inductance layout. An overall limitation of circuit modeling is that the results will only be as good as the accuracy and complexity of the circuit model used. To best illustrate this point, simulations with varying levels of complexity were made and the efficiency results on the vertical axis for each simulation were calculated as a function of load current on the horizontal axis and compared against an actual experimental result. The simplest simulation shown in light green only uses the device parameters to predict circuit performance. Adding layout parasitics reduces the pre predicted efficiency as did adding losses from the gate drive circuitry. Adding the inductor core losses completes the picture and the simulation now closely matches the measured result. Circuit level simulation modeling such as this is most useful to help correlate experimental measurements and gain a better understanding of the device operation since, as will be shown, the measurements themselves are also limited in their scope and accuracy. When evaluating an EGAN based converter, such as a half bridge, typical waveform measurements of the drain and gate include rise and fall times, peak overshoot, undershoot, and overshoot ringing frequency. The choice of measurement equipment and its bandwidth impacts these measurements directly. On the left is shown the measurement of the ringing in a relatively high frequency, in this case 10 MHz buck converter design, measured using a 2 GHz bandwidth oscilloscope and a 1 GHz probe from Tektronix. The different traces are for different bandwidth settings on the oscilloscope. As the bandwidth of the oscilloscope is increased, the measured overshoot of the switch node more closely matches reality. On the right side, the measurement of the ringing is shown for a lower frequency, in this case 500 kHz buck converter design. There's relatively little difference in the overshoot measurements as the oscilloscope bandwidth is increased. As a general guideline, a 500 MHz bandwidth scope and probe will give relatively accurate readings for rise and fall times in the 2 nanosecond or longer range. 
one gigahertz bandwidth is required for switching times lower than one nanosecond. To capture a reliable and high fidelity waveform, it is important to use a proper probing technique together with a probe with low input capacitance and a short ground loop connection feature. The impact of using a long ground lead such as an alligator clip over a short one such as a spring clip is illustrated here. While the relative position between the probe leads is important, the absolute position of the leads does not impact the measurement as much. The far point is farther away from the EGAN FETs than the near point. But with the short ground loop, the corresponding waveforms are almost identical. Both the modeling and measurement of these EGAN devices have limitations due to their high frequency capability. For simulation, the passive component parasitics and geometry of the system layout determine the system level inductances and damping. These are specific to a given setup and have to be estimated or modeled for every case. For voltage measurements of high speed switching circuits, the required bandwidth and voltage range of existing measurement systems are being pushed to their limits with 1 GHz probes and oscilloscopes a minimum starting point. Thus, to achieve a meaningful understanding of the system, the device modeling, circuit simulation, and actual measurements must be combined to best optimize EGAN-based power system designs for high performance. In this video, the basic techniques for modeling and measuring GAN transistors in high-performance power conversion circuits were discussed. How best to understand and predict the actual in-circuit behavior of GAN devices once layout has been completed was shown. Circuit-level simulation modeling is most useful to help correlate experimental measurements and gain a better understanding of device operation. To achieve a meaningful understanding of GAN device performance for the system, device modeling, circuit simulation, and actual measurement must be combined. For more detailed information about modeling and measurement for GAN transistors, please see the third edition textbook, GAN Transistors for Efficient Power Conversion, or view more videos in this how-to GAN series. And for more information on EGAN FETs and IC products and evaluation kits, go to epc-co.com.